This is every assignment that I've ever received from the majority of my educational career, spanning from middle school to university. And I've been saving them because I wanna do something at least a little cool with them to commemorate the completion of my formal education. And I've finally decided what I wanna do with all these assignments is turn them into a crystal. As any plant grows, it sucks up nutrients from the ground. These nutrients can contain ions like sodium, potassium, or chlorine. And these ions remain incorporated within the tissue of the plant. And so even after cutting a tree down, the wood still contains these ions. And if I were to turn this wood into paper, the paper would still contain these ions. Now these ions can form compounds that crystallize very easily. So essentially what my plan is, is to use these ions sucked up by the parent tree, which are now bound within the paper, to essentially grow some homework crystals. However, there are three small problems in the way of doing this. One being that the way the ions exist within the paper or the wood are not really conducive for crystallizing. The ions may exist as simple ions or maybe weakly bound inorganic salts. The second problem is that these ions or these inorganic salts are stuck in the paper. I need to get them out. And the third issue is that these ions are sparsely concentrated in the paper. So I need a really large volume of paper in order to get any usable product. Thankfully though, all three of these issues can be easily solved by simply burning the paper. During this process, organic components of the paper combust and are oxidized into carbon dioxide and water. And during combustion, those inorganic minerals can react at the high temperatures to form oxides, carbonates, and sulfates. And so as I burn the paper, this ash has a very high concentration of those compounds. The main compounds that I'm interested with in this ash though are potassium carbonates. These compounds are water soluble and grow nice crystals. Thankfully though, there are a good bit of potassium carbonates within ash. And so all I have to do to extract the majority of it is simply soak the ash in water to leach out all the water soluble carbonates. So I left the homework ash to sit in a bucket of water for a few days. And then to ensure that all the water soluble compounds were leached out, I put the ash and the water into a crock pot and I cooked the ash on high for about a day. The high temperatures will increase the solubility of these compounds in water so that I can extract a greater percentage of them. After this leaching process, I then filtered the ash from the water using an old t-shirt. And the water that we're separating is rich in all of those water soluble compounds from the ash. And we will go on to use these water soluble compounds to grow the homework crystal. So once I separated all of the water, I put the ash back in the crock pot with some fresh water. I'm doing this second rinse just to ensure that I get all of those compounds dissolved out of the ash. And after some time, I filtered out this ash a second time and was left with a large amount of dirty ash water. Now this is such a large volume of water that I can't really do anything with it, so I need to reduce the volume. So I poured the dirty ash water back in the crock pot, turned it on high, and let it boil down for a few hours. After this, I was left with a much more usable amount of water, which I poured into a beaker. It was still pretty dirty though, so I filtered it through a cotton ball. It turns out one filtration wasn't really enough, so I did it again and was pleased to see the solution get clearer, but it was still a little cloudy. If I'm planning to grow crystals with this, it is incredibly important not to have sediment in the solution. This is because any particulate that's in the solution can serve as a nucleation site for crystals to grow. If there are too many nucleation sites, when I try to grow crystals, I'll get a whole lot of little ones instead of a few nice big ones. Conversely, if there are minimal nucleation sites, only a few crystals will dominate growth and they will be able to grow large. So with that in mind, I passed the solution through one more step of filtration to get a nice clear solution. And at this point, it was time to reduce the volume again. Our ionic compounds are in here, however, they are incredibly dilute in concentration. We can see this if I take a quick pH measurement. Potassium carbonates are basic, especially potassium carbonate, but our pH now is neutral. So by boiling the solution down, I'm increasing the concentration of those potassium carbonates all the way up to their solubility limit in water. So after I sufficiently reduced the volume and increased the concentration of the solute, I took it off the hot plate and allowed it to cool. After cooling, we can see that some of the solute is crashing out of the solution, which tells me that I've approached the solubility limit of at least some of the solutes here, 
And so now what I wanna do is decrease the volume even further to make more solute crash out. So I decanted off the remaining liquid and put it back on the hot plate. After reducing the volume further, we can see that we have a very basic solution now. We also have a lot of really nice crystals crashing out of the solution. Ideally, these crystals have minimal impurities, so I'm going to decant off that brown liquid and keep these nice white crystals to grow my very large crystal. If I let this impure liquid evaporate all the way, we can see that it does form crystals, but compared to the first product that crashed out, these look incredibly impure. So let's move forward with the more pure product. If we take a closer look at it, we can see that the crystals are very long and needle-like. You can get a lot of information about a composition of a crystal just by its shape. And this shape suggests that the crystal is likely majority potassium bicarbonate, with small amounts of potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and maybe some chlorides or sulfates. On a tangential note, all three of these crystals are potassium aluminum sulfate. However, they each have different dopants that change the shape of the crystal. If you guys think this is interesting, let me know if you wanna see a video on the effect. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. I'm going to add some water to my primarily potassium bicarbonate to dissolve it all. To help all the compound dissolve quickly, I'm going to heat up the solution on a hot plate. Once everything was dissolved, I can then give it one more filtration just to make sure we have a pristine solution for growing crystals. And once that was done, I have a solution that's almost ready to grow crystals. Like we discussed before, crystals will only crash out of the solution once the concentration of the solute reaches its solubility limit. And now because this is a mix of different types of carbonates, not a pure compound, I don't know the exact solubility limit. So the best way to find that limit is just to let the beaker sit out and let water gradually evaporate. As it evaporates, the concentration of the solute goes up, and once that concentration reaches the solubility limit, we'll start to see crystals forming within the beaker. And after a few days of sitting out, we can see our first crystals start to form. I then filtered off the solution and used some of the larger crystals remaining in the beaker as my seeds. If I tie these seed crystals on some string and then lower them down into the crystal growing solution, crystal growth will be concentrated on this seed crystal, allowing it to grow large as the water evaporates. And so after a few weeks of sitting in this solution, we can see that this crystal has significantly increased in size. Although while it is cool looking, I think it could be a lot more cool looking if this was a polycrystal instead of a single crystal. So I snipped the crystal off of the string and inserted the string back into the solution. Now with the lack of a large individual seed crystal, many small crystals can nucleate and grow on this string, eventually fusing together and creating a polycrystal. And so now the only thing left to do was wait. And wait, I did, as this was sitting around growing, we did a lot of things on this channel, like separating individual metal grains, growing gallium crystals, making fake meteorite, titanium Damascus, growing bismuth crystals, and of course, acrylic Lichtenberg figures made by injecting and discharging electrons into acrylic via a particle accelerator generated electron beam. We have these for sale in our Etsy and eBay shops, and every dollar we make there goes right back into making these videos. So if you enjoy the content here, consider picking up the coolest desk ornament known to man. Anyways, after several months of slow evaporation, the polycrystal was ready. I removed it from the beaker and we could tell pretty well by the shape of these crystals that it is in fact primarily potassium bicarbonate. I think it's pretty cool that depending on what climate or conditions the tree grew in, the resultant crystal will look different because the climate and conditions influence the type and concentration of ions absorbed into the wood of the tree, and thus in my case the concentration of ions within the paper. So that may be to say that ash from a tree grown in Florida may produce crystals that look incredibly different from the crystals produced by the ash from a tree from Colorado. I have no way of knowing exactly where all of this paper was sourced from, so I can't pinpoint this crystal shape to a geographic location. But it would be really interesting to grow crystals from ash from trees from two different geographical locations and see if the different types of ash produce significantly different shapes of crystals. Although that's a topic for another video. I'm pretty glad with how my homework crystal turned out and I think it's pretty appropriate considering that my education was in material science. Maybe in the next video, I'll turn my homework into soap. Except I'm kidding. The next video is going to be a particle accelerator proof camera. Hopefully. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.